Thank you for blessing me. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, thank you for blessing me. Amen. God bless you. We're going to move expeditiously to the word of the Lord today. And we're going to try. Amen. Go with me to Job. The first chapter. And we conclude our series on the blessing. Because how many of you know that the blessing is on you? Yeah. And we've been talking about from the pit to the palace and uh, how the enemy tried to stop Joseph <coughs> from being all that God had called him to be, but the blessing was on him. Talked about the blessing last week, understanding the value of the blessing. Yeah. Because sometimes we live like we don't know what's on us. Yeah. We talk like we don't know what's on us. Yeah. We have low expectation which does, which does not go in alignment with the blessing that God has spoken over our life. We are the seed of Abraham. And he said, Abraham, I will bless you. Yes. And I will make your name great. Yes. And I will bless the nations that you are connected to. And you will be your blessing. Amen. And so we walk in that because Jesus did what he did for us. Galatians 3, it says that he reconnected us. He restored us. And now we are in the line in alignment with the blessing of Abraham. It's to everyone. Yes. And so we have that on us. But we have to know what it is. Know how it operates. We have to make sure that it is activated in our lives. And the things that you deal with has nothing to do with the blessing not being on you. Sometimes the enemy tries to make us think because of situations and circumstances that his hand has been lifted from us. The devil is alive. Amen. God's hand is on us. That's why we've been sustained. Because if the enemy had his way, it would have consumed us. May God will hold you until he brings you out. Tell your neighbor the blessing is on me. Because no one else can recognize the blessing on you until you acknowledge Amen. it first. Amen. You have to know it first. Yes. So say it with a righteous attitude. The blessing is on me. Yeah. Now walk like you know it. Act like you know it. Talk like you know it. Live like you know it. The blessing is on me. And so we continue the journey and bring it in. Because I want to talk to you from a different perspective a little bit today. Because we want to make sure that nothing stands between us and the blessing operating at its maximum. Because remember I told you, when the blessing is on you, kind of like last week, Jacob was not supposed to have the blessing even though through trickery. He was given the blessing, but once the blessing is given, it cannot be taken away. Right. But what the challenge is oftentimes, that we don't allow the blessing to operate in our lives. Right. It's on us, but it's laying dormant. Right. It's almost like a credit card. I say that often. You can get approved for a card, but if you don't activate it, it is of no use to you. The blessing is the same way he pronounces it over us, but if we don't activate it through prayer, through praise, through the study of the word, through our relationship, then we don't have the maximum of what the blessing brings. But in this season, walk out the blessing. Amen. That means there will be some things that you won't understand or things that don't make sense walking out anyway. Amen. See, all of us want things to be rationalized. Right. That you know one plus one is two. Right. But sometimes God's going to take a half and a half and make it three. Yeah. Right. Right. If thou canst believe. Right. Because you don't have to qualify according to man's standard all right. to have what God says you can have. Yeah. You just be in alignment with what God said. Right. And if God said it, it yeah. shall come to pass. How about you and say, if God said it, it shall come to pass. He does not need man's permission to bless you. He does not need man's permission to elevate you. He does not need man's permission to promote you. If thou canst believe and you walk in obedience to his word, it shall come to pass. So we have to look at things that can possibly be blessing blockers. Because there are things in our lives that will be blessing blockers if we are not careful. And we look at Job oftentimes and we begin with his journey. But I want to take us to the first part of Job. Uh -oh. And to look at a blessing blocker. Blessing blocker. Yeah. Job, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Verses 2 through 5. And the Bible reads... He had seven sons and three daughters. 
and he owned 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 donkeys and had a large number of servants. Say, Job was living a life. All right. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. Mm -hmm. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes and on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Mm -hmm. This was Job's regular custom. Regular. Like Jesus. Regular. Jesus. And Matthew's twin, sorry, Matthew 6, 25, just reading part A of that, Matthew 6, 25, and just part A of that I'd like to read if you're listening. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Can I just read that part right there again? Therefore, I tell you, do not worry worry about your life. Right. Father, thank you for your word. It is everything we need. We stand on your word that is a sure foundation. Thank you that it is light to us. And thank you that it's full of promises. And if you said it, it shall come to pass. So touch our faith and help us to believe that which we stand upon. Thank you. Father, well, thank you that your word is also sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you that it cut away things that are not profitable to us. So let your word permeate our hearts. And your word do what needs to be done. So that we can get the kingdom results that you said we could have. Now, Father, give us ears to hear and heart to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In the presence of the Lord. Can I begin like I oftentimes begin and say that God wants you and I as believers to walk out our greatness. God wants us to be in a place of influence. That's why he pronounced the blessing over us. Because when you are in a place of influence, you do just that. You influence others. And our desire shouldn't be just for houses and cars and, you know, the financial benefits. But our goal is to return people back to Jesus. Our goal is to influence individuals to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. All right. So he puts us in places and situations and circumstances not so we can be eaten up by them but that we can stand in victory in them yes. All right. we live in a day where people like to see things and god has made us the show so he can take it All right. All right. and so there are things that god will allow somebody say allow allow, allow on our lives so that glory can be revealed and so today I want to talk to you from the blessing, number four. But the subtitle is Do Not Worry. Right. Tell your neighbor, do not worry. Do not worry. Well, because God has commissioned us to be people of influence, the enemy wants to tear down or destroy every person of influence. Tell your neighbor, that means he's after you. That means he's after you. See, the enemy knew that Job was a man of influence. Mm -hmm. Didn't just start then. The enemy knew that's why he was after Joseph so much that Joseph was a man of influence. And so he's after each and every one of us that say that we've been born again. That we have been restored to God's original intention for our lives. The enemy does not want us to make it to the end. So the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you. They are to prosper you and not to do you any harm, but to take you to what? Expected it. And expected it. God has already put in place his expectation of your end. Yes. And your end is for you to be successful. Yes. Right. Said that on last week. Our success is good for 
for God's reputation. When he created us, when we entered this world, we were already given approval to succeed. I like to say it like this. The moment you were conceived, you were approved to succeed. All right. All right. All right. From the moment your coming started, God gave you everything you needed to succeed. Amen. Now the devil is the devil. Right. And his job, his job is to stop the intent for your life. His job. Right. his job is to stop you from rising to the occasion that God has for you. His job, his job is to destroy you and to block the blessing on your life. And so it was with Job. Job was a man that was wealthy. Bible says that he was the richest man in the East. The richest. He had influence with people. He had businesses. He had a nice family. Everything you could want, right. Job had. Job had. And so the enemy saw his growth. And the enemy knew not only was he the most influential man in the East, that if it kept going, if it kept going, he was going to take over the West. If it kept going, right. he was not just limited to one area, but the blessing of God was on him. And so he could walk into all territory and take over. He could walk into other places and influence. And that's what God meant for him. And that's what he means for us. Right. That we don't have to live limited. That we can have what God said we can have. Yes. But here is the interesting thing about Job that we don't talk about much. Job, in our biblical reading today, found himself doing something that would cause a violation in the blessing. Job, the Bible says that he would see his children and he would wonder if they were loving God like he was loving God. He was concerned that maybe they were not seeking God like he would seek God. And so he became fearful and he started to work. He said in our text, that when they would go for the feast, that when they finished, he would pray for the purifying of their souls. He would pray. Because he said, if they are not loving God yes. like they should, mm -hmm. let me cover them in prayer. Let me cover them. That's right. I'm not sure how they see God and what they're doing. And because I'm worried, I'm going to make the sacrifice. Now, it is a good thing for a parent to pray for their children, mm -hmm. but not to pray in fear right. and not to pray in work. Job was trying to stand in the place mm -hmm. where his children were supposed to stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Job wasn't even sure if they were loving on God or not. What you? What you? He was just scared yeah. and worried that they may not be. So he put himself in a place, the blessed man, mm. put himself in a place All right. that went against something God said. God said, in Matthew's that we read there, the Bible says, do not worry, do not worry. about your life. Do not worry. <laughs> in another translation, it says, do not worry about everyday happenings. Oh, Lord Jesus. Do not be concerned about that. Your job is to walk in obedience yes. and be concerned about the plan of God. Yes. And to understand that God is God yes. and that he will take yes. care of us yes. and the things connected to us. Yes. See, sometimes we try to play God. Yes. And we try to sit on the throne for the things that are connected to us. Now, Job was okay if he just prayed for them. But for Job to worry so much about him until he tried to manipulate God's blessing on their lives just in case they were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Job didn't relinquish his children to God. He took ownership of that and their future. He let God bless him and he was going to take care of them. How many times do we find ourselves stepping out of place 
Because sometimes there's some things God wants to do to our children so he can work through our children. Wow. And we rescue. Come on. We prohibit the hands of God because we're trying to do it ourselves. Right. Now, Job did this with his children, but it's not just children we do it with. Sometimes we try to step in and protect a job that God wants to release us from. Sometimes we try to hold on to some things that God is trying to release from us. So we let God do this and we step in and do that. But God said, either I'm God at all, or I'm not God at all. Until we can release everything, somebody say everything, to God, we're not walking in total satisfaction where God wants us to be. Now, I'm a parent just like you. If I feel like something's not going right, I'm going to pull the God in me and try to cover me. But the Bible says you got to work out your own soul salvation. And there's some experiences that I can't protect you from. But what I can do is pray the blessing of God on your life. I can pray that you hear from God. I can pray that he covers you. Every morning before my son and my daughter leave, I pray that the blood of Jesus protects them. I pray that angels go before them. I pray that they have ears to hear and a heart to receive. I pray that they are allergic to the schemes of the enemy. Did you have power to pray? I will say it again. The prayers of the righteous are very much. But watch the intent of your prayer. If you are praying from worry, if you are praying from fear, I told you my thing when my son first started driving, it was raining, I was so scared and nervous. God said, I'm the same God when the weather's dry. Same one. Just pray that he utilize good sense and operate in his skill. But you can't be sitting here worried and panicking all the time because then you're not concentrating on the things I need you to do. Can I tell you, if the enemy can wrap you in worry, then he has your attention taken away from yeah. what your attention needs to be on. Yeah. You're worrying about something God has already taken care of. Wow. So you're not praying for what needs prayer over. Right. So the Bible says, even though Job had all of these wonderful things working for him, he worried and he operated in fear. How do we know it? Because in the third chapter, Job says, after we talked about it, he went through certain things. He said, the thing I feared the most most has come upon me. Lord Jesus. Here was the strategy of the enemy. The enemy knew Job's worry yes. and he knew Job's fear. All right. Even in all of this, so when he was out looking across the earth, as he told God, right? Because God said, Devil, what you doing? What you doing? He said, just checking out the earth, God. Just, just checking, checking out, out the earth. Checking out, <laughs> checking out the earth. <laughs> God said, Have you considered? Yeah. Job. Now, isn't it interesting? The enemy knew that Job was full of worry and fear, but God knew he had worry and fear. And that was something that had to be worked out of Job. Because Job feared losing everything, his family not being right. He lived in that. Even though he lived in the blessing, he had a component of fear and worry. So the devil comes and he said, you know the story? Checking it out. He said, have you considered my servant Job? They ever said, ain't nobody touching Job. You got that head so thick around him. Right, right. Can't nothing happen to Job. <laughs> God said, you know what? Everything of his is released into your hands. Mm -hmm. Now I want to make sure we're clear. God didn't sick the devil on right. Job. Right. But he left the option open. Left it open. Left it open. God does not put the devil on you. But he speaks truth about you. And then he leaves the option open. All right. The enemy had been wanting to get a joke. Wanting. But he knew he couldn't touch it with that hedge. That's right. Can I tell you in your life, God won't lift the blessing, but sometimes he'll remove the hedge. Right. And what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. What do you do? When God what do you do? removes the hedge. Yeah. You shouldn't really be concerned that he moves the hedge. Because yeah. his word said he'll never leave you. Come on. No to say you. So the power was only in the hedge because God gave it power. There you right. go. Just because he removes the hedge doesn't mean he removes his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So God does not allow you to go through anything, hear me in the Holy Ghost, that he has not equipped you to handle. Yeah. Yeah. Before the enemy came looking, God already empowered Job. Yeah. So that whatever he went through, God knew. Because yeah. the devil was saying, he only serving you because of what you do for him. Right. What the devil didn't know is the reason God did for him was because 
responsible when he served. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't built on things, it was built on relationship. Yes. And so Bob said that he told him, I've nothing, hey, and the devil didn't waste any time. He started attacking Job. He started hitting him in the gap area. Yeah, Can I caution you today yeah, to be yeah. careful about your gap area? Yeah, yeah. Uh. Be careful about the area that's not strengthened. Because yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you my own. I used to be so protective of my kids because the doctors would say I couldn't have them, so I was going to take care of my kids. Right. It was not just a little, maybe less than a year ago, that God said, release them to me. I was like, but they mine. He was like, but they mine first. <laughs> because I don't know how we think we can protect something better than God. But the enemy uses our gaps. He uses our weaknesses. That's why you have to be careful when you say things like, oh, I'm good, but if I lose that, I'm not going to make it. Then where is the attack coming? After that. You've got to be in such a place that you say, God, no matter what hits my life, I will not go back. I don't even know what's ahead, but I know you've already been there. I don't even know what's ahead of me, but I know I'm in your hand. And as long as I've got King Jesus, as long as I'm in the master's hand, everything is going to be all right. See, that's not something you just talk. That's something you have to know and you have to live. Because the devil knows that you just talking. And he will come and try you in the area where you're just talking. So why did the enemy hit his stuff first? Because Job loved God. And that's not why he served God. He served God because he really loved him. But he was concerned about his stuff. Yeah. And he was concerned about his children. That's right. He was concerned about the things that were attached to him. Right. Yes. And so the enemy came after what was attached to him most. He attacked his earnings. Mm -hmm. He attacked his kids. Yeah. See, because you know, he didn't come for his body first. Not first. That's right. Not first. That's, right. That's right. He came for his things first. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's why you have to build up yourself in your most holy faith. Yes. That if you lose something, yeah. you don't get lost with it. Don't get lost. Yeah. Because anything God gives one time, yeah. he's God enough to give it again. Yeah. When you understand the blessing is on you, you're not so much concerned about the blessings that come to you. Because the blessing on you attracts blessings to you. So if you lose a blessing, here comes another one. If you lose something, here comes something else. Because it's the blessing that's on you. But we confuse what's on us with what comes to us. That's why we get so attached to stuff. That's right. And things. That's right. And people. That's right. If they leave my life, I'm just not gonna make it. Well, let me be a testimony. Come on. Uh, uh, yeah. You will live uh, yeah. and not die. Yeah. Right. Because remember, those things are blessings. So the enemy attacked all of his stuff. That's what she did. And so Job was trying to hold on. Job loved God. So the first chapter said that he said, you know, he ripped his clothes and he worshiped. He said, naked I came, naked I came. and naked I leave. That's right. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes it away. Job was trying to hold on. He trying to hold on. Because even in his love for God, he was hurting. He was struggling with what he lost. Right. So then the Bible says in the second chapter, then it attacks his body. And Job is like, man, this here is something. Mm. Yeah. But Job remembered. God. Remember God. Yes. He knew God. That's right. He knew before anything came, God was. Yes. And so even though he could not explain what was happening to him, I'm talking to you in this house. Because some of you are going through some things that you cannot explain. Yes. And people will try to make you think that it's something you've done. That there is a hidden sin that you need to get rid of. But there's sometimes that God just tells the devil that I step back and I take my hands off. Do what you do, but don't you touch their life. 
Because the enemy, even in his power, is limited. Yes. limited. He has to submit limited. and surrender to the voice of God. But what you have to understand, that's why you have to know the power of the blessing. The devil is after you. The devil wants to see and he wants to kill and steal and destroy. So he is coming just like he came for them. But just like God delivered them, he will deliver you. Stop acting like you don't know him as a healer, as a deliverer, as a way maker. Just because you're in the thing don't mean it's going to take you out. But he won't get me in anything that he didn't empower me to get out of. Job had to shift from just seeing God as a provider to seeing him as a sustainer. 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 And a deliverer. I just stop out here to tell you with your blessed self that you serve a God who is a sustainer and a deliverer. I'm so glad. Trouble don't last always. But you have to know this. Don't let what you're in alter your thinking. Don't, do Don't let what Don't you're do in change what you know. I know my Redeemer lives. I know I'm the head and not the tail. I know that the blessing is on me. I know that this too shall pass. Even though Job couldn't figure it out, he had to get to the place where he understood that the blessing was on him. And it produced what was happening to him. All right. Now the whole thing I love about God is when he recommends you for something or in you, he will place you in chapter one, but he already writes chapter 42. All right. yes. 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 God was so sure about Job so sure. So sure. that he went ahead and penned 42. So sure. That your matter will be great. So sure. Oh, yeah. 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 He already pins that thing from the beginning. See, because God knew something that the devil didn't know. Yeah. That's why God is trying to prove yeah. to the devil that there's more to you than what yeah. he sees. Yeah. He thinks you're only about stuff, but there's something on the inside that will work on the outside. There's something on the inside that'll make you hold on when you don't feel like that. There's something on the inside that tells you it will be all right. Is there anybody in here that said there's more to me than what you see? Than what the devil counted on. So Job had his moments though. Job said that thing appeared. That thing has come upon me. But in an eighth chapter. I love that when he said in the word. That your small beginnings. Will be greater in the latter. So Job knew. But Job had to be delivered. See we think Job's deliverance was just from. His current situation. Mm -hmm. Job had to be delivered from fear. Yeah. Fear. And from work. Yeah. Philippians, put that up there if you don't mind. Philippians 4, and you know the scripture. It says, be not anxious about anything. anything. But in yes. everything. Yes. Every situation. Yes. By prayer and petition. Uh -huh. And with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Present your request to God. He says, I don't care what it's about. Whether it's about your family, whether it's about your job, whether it's about your Be anxious. Don't worry about anything. He says, don't worry about anything and pray about everything. Yeah. Job had to get to a place because in chapter 1 he worshipped. But after that he started trying to figure it out. After that he started bothering him. He started saying, what is really going on? He even started asking God if a man died, shall he live again? Yeah, live again. Yeah. He's like, this here is rough. So I'm not minimizing what you go through, but I'm not going to minimize the power that's in you either. Yeah. Because everything you need is on the inside of you. Yeah. So the Bible says that he has all of this stuff going on. and You know, Job is going through all of these things. And then Job starts coming to himself. What do you say? Yeah. See, because in a bad place, you got to learn to come to yourself. Yeah. 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 But you've got to decide which voice you're going to listen to. Which one? The channel that tells you you're not going to make it or the God that has already declared that it is finished. That I have already completed the work in you. I know the plans I have for you. Job had to come to himself. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. He had to get in a place to say, God, everything that I am is in your hand. Mm -hmm. Everything that I'm dealing with is in your hand. Mm -hmm. I challenge you to make that phrase a part of your prayer. No matter what I'm going through and what I'm dealing with, God, I'm in, in your hand. hand. Yeah. God is in your hand. Yeah. I can see further than where I am right now, but God, oh. I'm in your hand. Oh. Somebody shout, God, I'm in your hand. Yeah. 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 Even when you don't know what's going on, make sure you're in God's hand. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible said that he got to a place of understanding what was coming out of his mouth, he even began to pray. He said, God, if you see anything in me, anything, uh -huh. I need you to clean that up. He said, and fix my mouth. Fix my mouth, please. Because obviously there's some things coming out of my mouth yes. that's messing with my destiny. Yes. Messing with my destiny. That's why I say all the time, you have to be careful. He's put life and death in your mouth. So while he was walking the blessed life, he was all he was speaking out of fear. He was speaking out of worry. But when he decided just to relinquish everything to God, how do I know when you relinquish it to God? Because you stop praying as if you are the provider, That's and right. you pray as if God is the provider. Yes. You say, God, I acknowledge you. God, yes. I bless you. Lord, I know you will make a way yes. somehow. That's why he said you have to cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. I love that passage. It's 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9. It says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That means whatever God has his word, get under it. Whatever he says shall come to pass, get under it. Stop waiting for it all to make sense. God saying it is enough. He said that he may lift you up in due time. That means stop laying your deliverance on somebody else. Trust God to bring you out. Yeah. Yeah. Trust, Trust God, God to bring you through. Trust, Trust God. God to work it out. Trust God to turn it around. Because if man gives it to you, it has a limit of delivery. But when God gives it to you, it's just right for you. It'll do what it's supposed to do. Trust God to do it. He says, Son, the mighty hand of God, that he will lift you up in due time. Here you go. He said, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, here we go, because here's what the enemy attacks when you're going through. He told him to be alert and to be sober-minded. Yeah. The enemy will try to make you think that God does not love you, mm -hmm. yes, he will. that God has forgotten about you. He'll do it. But you've got to go back to reflecting that what God bless, no man can curse. Yeah. That God has pronounced a blessing on my life. And so I just put what I don't understand on him. Oh, yeah. I put what's not making sense to me on him. Cast all of that on him because he cares for you. Be alert, be sober. Here we go. For your enemy is prowling around like a lion looking for someone look to be back. Look Take your neighbor again. He's looking for you. But here we go. We are in power. Resist him. Resist him. That's all you got to do. Resist him. Say, boy, bye. Ain't nobody got time for that. I already know that I'm blessed in the field, blessed in the city, blessed when I come, blessed when I go. I dare you try to say on me on I am blessed. Well, let's prove it. Let's prove it. Deuteronomy 28, 28 and 1. Prove it. 28. Deuteronomy. That's what we've got to do because he commanded us not to worry. He said, if you go against what I command, you violate the activity of the blessing. Because he said right here, here we go, Deuteronomy Bible readers, you ready? If you fully obey, somebody say fully obey. Fully obey. Fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands. Somebody say command. Command. That I give you today. The Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. All these blessings. Somebody say blessings. Blessings. All of these blessings will come on you and accompany you, overtake you, if you obey the Lord. That's why I say, don't you worry about a thing. Because when you start worrying about a thing, you take it out of my dominion, and you put it in your area. But I just need you to obey what I say. If I say don't worry, part of your prayer needs to get up in the morning and say, I will be anxious for nothing. That God's got my day, God has my month, God has my year, Because remember he said, if you obey them. Yeah. Well, if I'm worried, 
I'm in a state of what? Disobedience. If he says, I command you not to worry, Matthew 6, 25, don't worry about stuff in your life, don't worry. Philippians, be anxious for nothing, don't you worry. But you find yourself worrying. But if he said in Deuteronomy, listen to what I say and obey it, then I will bless you. Blessings will overtake you. That's why things are going to happen in your life that don't make sense when you don't worry about it. Right. Yeah. You know, I keep talking about my children. The other day my son wrecked a car. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, because sometimes not to worry takes a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, Lord, I thank you that he was not hurt. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you that there was not another car traveling the direction he was traveling. Thank you, Jesus. See, because when you don't worry, then you can be thankful. He said, with thanksgiving, yeah. let your request be made known. Yeah. Now, if I was up there cutting up, no, you must have been going fast. What were you doing? How about it? Then I didn't have time to be thankful that he was alive. I didn't have time to be thankful that there was no other car. I didn't have time to be thankful that it wasn't another car. And we have insurance. I didn't have time. Sometimes we're talking the word of things and not speaking thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. God said, Joe, it's going to be all right. I just need you to know. We in this together. I already got 42 waiting on you. 42, 42. Joe, when he came to himself and stopped focusing on things yeah, yeah, yeah. and people. Yeah. Because remember, it wasn't just about his children. His wife started cutting up. Uh, wife, yeah. wife. She said, Joe, don't you think enough is enough now? Yeah. Stop being a man of integrity and go and curse God so we can all get out of this. Right. Right. <laughs> but something in Joe yeah, 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 yeah. said, what I'm going through Jesus. is bigger than me. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Bigger than me. That's why I say God put the blessing on you for more than cars and houses. He put a blessing on you for something different. There's a cause that's bigger than you. And when you come through a thing, it's going to connect to that big thing in you. When people see that God broke you out, then they'll believe that he can bring them out. When, God, when people see that God healed your body, then people will believe he is a healer. When people know your situation and they see God turn it around for you, then they say, if he did it for them, he'll do it for me. Tell you. going to double up on Joe because it was bigger than him. Double up on him. Double up on him. He said, I can't just give you back what you lost. I got to double up on that thing because it's bigger than you. Joe sat in that place. I'm done. I'm done. And Joe got to a place in that 13th chapter. He said, God, because this is about me and you, though you sleep. Here it is. Here it is. I don't even care no more about this stuff. Here it is. I don't even care no more about what they say. Here it is. I don't even care about what I have to go through. I'm not even gonna give the devil credit for this. No, you slay me. Cause I do know that the devil can't do nothing to me unless you give him.
Bible said, Job lived to be old and satisfied. I speak in this room that you shall live out your days. That you will not live out your days. That you're going to live to be old. You're going to be good.
So we stand and we declare. Don't be just somebody who justifies. Decree and declare what shall be in your life when Joel got a hold of God and the blessing on him and not worried about the stuff. God was able to give him the stuff because he was all about relationship. Now the devil could hit your old man, take all this stuff, Joel, but he didn't care. I, but you know what happened when you mess with my stuff? <laughs> you know what happened? Give me dope. <laughs> you want me to have more? Keep messing with me. Keep messing with me. Y'all said in this season, stop being afraid of what you lost. Because double is attached to it. All right. If you just hold on to the blessing. Amen. And if you just trust God. Amen. I finish. Stand in the Your neighbor, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Tell me that in this church, the board can attest to it. There's some days, some things we have to do, and I'll get myself again. I say, you know what? But I'm not worried about it. Somehow, some way, God's gonna take care of you. And sometimes he takes care of through means that you would rather not be this way. What God, you know what? As Deacon Fred says all the time, I call him Deacon Brother Fred. If it's his will, it's his bill. I'm not. When my arm was hurting, and it was the first symptom my mother had before that long journey of illness and passing, I would sit there and try to ice it and hold it. And all that. God said, when are you going to speak to it? Because I, I, I nursed it. But he said, when are you going to speak to it? I begin to speak to that arm and anoint it with oil and say, you will not be a part of my life. All right. I'm not leaving here with no ALS. I'm not having no ALS symptoms. I'm not having nothing. Amen. And the more I pray, the harder, the more pain I have. Uh -huh. See, you can't stop talking That's right. just because you still have symptoms. You have to keep speaking of things. Because your faith is coming from what you're saying, but your actions Tell testifies of what you believe. Yes. So I was still speaking, it was hurting, it was hurting, it was hurting so bad. And I'm still keep saying, I am healed. I am healed. I am well. Y'all wonder why I pray for your bodies to be healed. Every time I pray pretty much, that healing birth through flows through your body because I bind the enemy. So I speak and I speak and I speak to it and it would hurt and it would hurt and it would hurt. And I go to the doctor and they say, Well, we don't know. And I paid you a copay for that. God said, do you believe? I said, God, yes, I believe. You know what he told me? He said, then act like it. Right. And when it was hurting, I was still coming out lift. And I tell y'all about it so I can put it out there so I can say. And one day when I just kept speaking up, I didn't even notice that the things I was doing that was typically tied to pain, there was no pain. Mm -hmm. I said, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Because of the church I came from, they say, do something you couldn't do before. And I would raise their hand. I said, it's gone. God said, like, were you expecting something else? He said, isn't that what you prayed about? Isn't that what you stood for? And I'm telling y'all, it has been over a year now from that day to this day. And sometimes God does it in different ways. Sometimes it's through surgery. Sometimes it's through time. Is up. But the fact is your faith. Yeah. Yeah. God, however you do it, it's fine. Yeah. But God, I trust you. If you choose another one, that's fine. But my job, my role, All right, is just to trust you. Right. Right. I trust you right where I'm standing. Right here. Yeah. I love Joel said, from where I'm standing, yeah. standing yeah. I can see God. Yeah. That means yeah. I can see your situation.
Tell your neighbor and say it real deep like you prophesied. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because that is just as powerful prophetically as anything that can hit your ears. Don't worry. Don't mean it won't be a challenge. But don't worry. God, if I really, really trust you, I'm not going to worry. Some people say you have to worry. To be worried about nothing that makes no sense. That's not smart. You have to worry about something. That's not what the word says. Yeah, you need to be strategic. Yes, you need to be concerned about things. That doesn't mean throw up your hands and just whatever case around. No, that's not what it means. It means you do what needs to be done. When you can't do anymore, you put that in God's hand. But God, you know. Lord, you're able. And God, whatever occur, you're going to take care of me. I'm telling you, it'll take some time to get there. But when you get there, you just be like, I know the Lord will. And in it all and through it all, I'm going to be okay. Put your hand on yourself and say, I'm going to be okay. So I'm going to pray in this house today. I want you to lift those hands. And I want to rebuke the spirit of worry over your life. Because God has your destiny in his hand. So we pray that God gives us the wisdom to align ourselves with it. So don't just wait. I'm just waiting on God. No, 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 no. Faith with that works is dead. Yes. Right. We pray that you align yourself yes. to the blessing that he has for you so that blessings will come to you. I'm telling you, it is such a season of the miraculous and supernatural. Yes. Stop waiting for everything to make sense. God told me to do something the other day and I'm like, mm, Lord, Okay, you don't want it, I'll give it to somebody else. I said, like, wait, wait, we gotta be hasty now. Wait a minute. Be hasty, God. But I committed, I said, you know what, God, this week, we'll do it. Because the only thing I can give them somebody is a no, and I'm, I've heard that before. But what if? Even though it makes no sense whatsoever, what if? I'm just looking for some courageous people that say, what if? What if? So there's some things God has put on your heart, but it doesn't make sense. But what if? Job said, that was some stuff. I done let them, everybody go. I'm going to pray, I'm going to move, but God, this is us. I refuse to worry. I'm not going to be fearful. I'm just going to walk in the blessing. So I speak that over your life today, that you walk in the blessing. Father, thank you in this house for your word. Thank you for your anointing and your power. Thank you for reminding us that the blessing is on us. And Father, we speak against every blessing blocker. Father, areas where we're worried, Father, where we're fearful, or where we're doing things that are out of alignment. Father, forgive us for that. We release it and we let it go. But we understand what's on us. Thank you that we can do what you said we can do. We can be what you said we can be and we can have what you said we can have. We refuse to give in to what others say and their opinion, our situation and circumstances. But Father, we trust you. We get off the throne. We leave you on the throne. And we say, have your way in our lives, God. Father, help us to see big, to dream big, to talk big. You are a big God. And you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask of you. And Father, as we stand firm and as we go through our go through, knowing that the blessing is on us, thank you that as you delivered Joseph, as you delivered Job, as you delivered Gideon, as you delivered Peter and David, God, you will deliver us. And you will place us at the place designed for us. Father, we declare that at the end of it all, double hits our life. Thank you that more than enough hits our life. Thank you that favor accompanies us and blessings overtake us. Because the blessing is on us. Help us to know it. Help us to value it. 
and help us to walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Clap those hands right there. And if there's one today that does not know the Lord, that's the greatest blessing you could ever have. Is to receive him as Lord and Savior of your life. God does not care about what you've been in, what you've been through. The only thing that matters to him is that you come to him. Say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died and rose again for me. And I want him to be Lord and Savior of my life. Can I tell you, you're in a room full of individuals that have to come the same way. So with hands bowed and hands lifted, if there's one today that says, I want to be saved. I want to repent of my sins. I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. Not another day do you have to go without knowing him. But you can secure your position with him. If there's one today where you take that right hand and lift it above the others, it says, I'm not sure, but I want to be sure. I don't want to die and not be where I need to be. But I want to be saved. I want Jesus to walk with me in every situation and circumstance in my life. I want the blessing to be on me and to flow through me. Is there one? I see one. I see your hand up. Amen. Is there another? Is there another? This is, I want to be saved. I want to be in right relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessings, blessings, blessings. It's working right there for one soul that says, yes, I want Jesus as Lord of my life. Now, what you do is I always ask you to do so that she will know she's never alone. Can we all pray it together and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. And thank you for the opportunity to receive you into my life. Father, today, I repent of my sin. I ask you to come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. For I believe that you died and rose again just for me. And because you did, and because I believe you did, and I repent of my sin, I am saved. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for washing me. And thank you for restoring me. In Jesus' name, say it again. I am saved. I am saved. Just like that. Your sins are forgiven. Your life has been restored. You can redeem. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise for a soul saved today. dismissed but lift those hands father we secure we speak the blessing over every life help us to know what we have and walk in it thank you for doors that are attached to the blessing on our life thank you for provisions that are attached to the blessings on our life thank you for favor that's attached to the blessing on our lives. And Father, we declare and we decree that before the end of this year, yes, Lord. that unusual doors will open in the name of Jesus. I sense that in the Holy Ghost in this room. That unusual favor yes, will Lord. rest on your people. Yes, Lord. Yes. And people will wonder why in the world are they agreeing to that amount. Or they're giving that opportunity. And we will declare it's the Lord's doing. Yes. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Yes. The Father connect our faith to the provision. In the name of Jesus. Thank you that testimony shall come. Because of miracles because of supernatural intervention. In Jesus' name. Come on, you know, just say, say, thank you, Lord, and I receive. Yeah, thank you, Lord, and I receive. And I ask you to do something this week, and we are going to see, typically we do it at the beginning of the year, but I just feel it in the Holy Ghost today. I want you to go and get your journal, or wherever you write, and that thing, that thing, and if you know what I'm talking about, whatever that thing is, I want you to write that thing down. And I want you to begin to declare and decree over it. 
that Father, thank you for the wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for the people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the strategy. Thank you for the words to say. Thank you for the open doors. Thank you for everything connected to this blessing. Yes, Lord. And I decree it because the blessing is on me. In Jesus' name. I want you to do that every day. Every day that you get up. Every day. Yes. Decree it. Declare it. Speak to it. And can I ask you to do one more thing? On this Tuesday. Can I ask everybody to fast with us on this Tuesday? Only till 12 noon. That's fine. But I want you to fast with that thing in mind. That God, I believe you. God, I trust you. God, thank you that the blessing is on me. And thank you that the blessing will handle whatever's in front of me. So this Tuesday, from the time you get up to 12. Now, for those of y'all don't get up to 11.30, you go on to about 4. Because <laughs> morning people... <laughs> Okay, till noon and just declare that just decree it I want you to stand in your God given authority stand in your kingdom authority and God according to your word decree that thing alright right, any takers any takers any takers any takers write that down pray over it decree and declare and every day so that he can guide your steps the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord sometimes you need God so God to guide you to the right person Think at the right time. Show up to a particular place when you need to. Pull back when you need to. Say what needs to be said. So, Father, thank you for wisdom. That's attached to provision. In Jesus' name. Thank you that on Tuesday, every day and any day, but on Tuesday, as we unite together to bombard heaven, thank you that we shall get kingdom results. We declare it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's seed time in the house of the Lord. Thank you for staying a little bit longer than it than usual today. Thank you, thank you. It's seed time. If you're in need of an envelope, raise your hand and they will serve you. If you give me a give a That's we ask you to stand as well. Blessings, blessings. Blessings on you today. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Next month we are starting This Is Us. This Is Us series.